السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته. بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم، الحمد لله والصلاة والسلام على رسولنا الكريم وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين، وإذا موعودة سئلت بأي ذنب قتلت. When the young child who was buried alive will be asked, for what crime were you killed? On August 16th of this year, 2023, I got a news alert that my name had been mentioned in an article. And this time, it wasn't Ted Cruz calling me an anti-Semite. This time, it was another Omar Suleiman, a 16-year-old who shares my name, who was murdered in the West Bank, where, by the way, there is no Hamas. And he was shot in the chest in cold blood while he was riding his dirt bike around the West Bank where his family has lived for generations. His name was Jose Omar Suleiman, the same name that my parents gave me. Last year, the seven-year-old boy, Rayan Suleiman, in the West Bank, once again, occupied territory, while he was walking home from school with his book sack, which had an animated car on it, and suddenly found himself being chased down by IDF soldiers who claimed that he had thrown stones at them. And with their full force, they followed him home to his house. And he went and hid in the corner of his room. And as they banged on the door and started to bang on his window, a seven-year-old boy with no medical history died of a heart attack. Cardiac arrest, a seven-year-old. Palestinian boy terrorized by the Israeli government. Leyan Suleiman. A few weeks ago, we buried a six year old boy, Wadir Al Fayyum, a young Palestinian American who was stabbed to death, not in the West Bank, not in Gaza, in Chicago by a 71-year-old landlord who was directly incited by the hate speech of the President of the United States of America. <laughs> whose dehumanizing rhetoric and whose repeated debunked lies about seeing decapitated Israeli babies caused the man to go and decapitate a Palestinian boy. When Wadir was killed, I want to share with you something that happened with me. A so-called ally, and I emphasize so-called, reached out to me to express condolences for the death of Wadir. After two weeks of having repeated, I stand with Israel, and failed to acknowledge a single Palestinian baby's life in Gaza. And I responded to that person. And I said to him, what's the difference between Wadir and the thousands of Palestinian babies that are being decapitated by your bombs in Gaza? What's the difference between Wadir and Rayan? What's the difference between a Palestinian child here and a Palestinian child there. You want to know how human a Palestinian child is? Look around you and see all the Palestinian children that grew up in this country because their parents were displaced. And I responded to him, and I told him this, and I want you to remember this the next time someone uses this double speak of caring about Islamophobia and anti-Arab bigotry in this country, but using the same tactics and framings to justify the killing of our brothers and sisters there, I said to this man that if I 
had never been born in this country, if my parents did not find a way out of that occupied land to raise me here, you who is expressing condolences to me here would have justified my death over there. There is no difference between a Palestinian that is here and a Palestinian that is there. We have parents that are writing the names of their children on their arms so that if they have to pull them from the rubble, they can be recognized. Is that the type of humanity that we want? Is that the so-called moral high ground that this country stands on? And so here's what we do. If I was over there, and my parents didn't make it out, they would have had to do this to me. And I may have been murdered by the same taxpayer dollars that I'm paying right now. We're sick and tired of being dehumanized. We're sick and tired of being made complicit. We're sick and tired of the rhetoric. We're sick and tired of the occupation. We do not just demand an end to the current bombardment of Gaza. We demand an end to the occupation. We demand an end to apartheid. We demand freedom in every single sense of the word. And let me tell you something, because you know how some people are going to report on this rally. They can mistranslate our movement all they want. They can draw these little pieces of land and say that this is your future state all that they want. But we are going to draw our map the same way that our parents drew that map. We're going to use the terms the same way that our parents use their terms. You don't get to dehumanize us and then tell us how we get to resist that dehumanization. And I want to end with one thing. Your brothers and sisters, pay close attention. There has been a bill on the floor in Congress about the detainment of over 5,000 Palestinian children in Israeli prisons since 2017 that can't get passed. But somehow, 412 congressmen found the moral conscience to suddenly pass a quick resolution to say that they stand with Israel. Know that when they say, I stand with Israel, they are saying, I stand with genocide. And if Joe Biden thinks that he can use his double speak on our community and come back to us and beg us for our votes, let it be known, let it be known to all of those, including Joe Biden and all of those congressmen who fail to see our humanity today and who fail to hear our voices today that we will not see their names on the ballot next year, and we will not hear them when they come call and call us next year. And that we will not allow for them to tell us anymore that the only refuge we have from right-wing racists are two-faced liberals. Dear brothers and sisters, there are thousands of us here today. There are millions of us around the world. I know that it's a time of anger. I know that it's a time of grief, but do not despair. We will mobilize, we will penalize, we will penalize those who dehumanize us when they call upon us to try to get them into office. We will march, we will raise our voices under the full weight of the political and media establishments. We will not give up because our brothers and sisters have not given up and even though our names are written on our arms, our parents have embedded Palestine in our hearts.